one of the dumbest conversations I've ever seen was like, the three balls were batted. Well, okay. One of them to Kyle Hamilton, no one argues, was one of the worst passes he's had of the season. He does this a lot, and he does it against good teams when he scrambles and he turns into like 2015 Russell Wilson. And it works a lot against shitty teams. When you play bad, or I mean great teams, great defenses, that's not really tolerated. You know what you got to do sometimes? Throw the fucking ball away. So to me, the pick where he threw it across his body to George Kittle, like that's 100% on the quarterback. That's not bad at ball. You're saying that's not, you don't get bad. No. Yeah, agree. Right. That, that, that is, so he has two picks. One's a baby zone and the other's across his body against the best defense in the league. Like, I'm sorry. Like those are two, even if you just say, okay, other two picks, throw them away. You have two interceptions in a game against the Ravens. Let's just put it that way. You just threw, if I told you going into that game, he threw two picks, you'd be like, that's going to be a problem, right? I'm not even counting the other two and obviously Donald's pick, whatever. But there's two picks. One, if I told you he threw two picks, one's a red zone pick in the in the end zone. You'd be like, oh, fuck, this is a problem. This is Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, it was awful. And th- listen, it happens. It's football. And it cost him the MVP. <laughs> I mean, it's simple, period, point blank, end of story, right? That was the MVP swing, right? Th- that night, over. It ended. Yeah. And fairly so, I thought. Yeah, you know, when people say we need you to pass the eye test, you then can't throw four touch throw it four interceptions against the MVP and right. on Christmas Day. Against the other number one seed when 30 million people are watching. It was just there was I'll, that that game was worth fair or not. The reality was four games or something, right? Yeah, I mean it was just his biggest eye test game, period. And everyone and he needed the eye test in order to win the MVP, and that was his biggest eye test game. And he comes back, he battles. Like to me, his best best quality is like mental toughness, unfazed, battles right back. It's why you saw the videos last night in the locker room. Trent Williams, like his biggest supporter. Like I, I'm unfazed by mental capacity, but I think there are question marks, and you're not going to see it in the NFC because the defenses are putrid right now. Of like playing the big boys, the big time defenses. You know, I I would be concerned. <laughs> Right at this point in time in his career, right? Cleveland, a little overwhelmed, right? The Baltimore thing, a little overwhelmed. Doesn't mean he still doesn't throw great passes and have explosive plays. Like he's a good player. I think that's a huge element, big picture. Even if they win the Super Bowl, it's like he, he's got to find a way to be, a, I don't know, more under control or just we're not, we don't play hero ball when you're playing the elite teams. You, you play control the ball. That's like Tom Brady, right? There's a balance. I just think when you play in the biggest games, what you do in those games defines everything else. So if you make the play, when you make that hero ball play, sweet. If you don't make the play, then bad. That simple. If you don't try the play and make a smart play, then that's that's good too. But you only get so many shots. Like Nobody argues about Joe Montana and brings up how many yards he threw for, how many touchdowns he had, or what his efficiency was, or his yards per attempt. There's like four championships. That's it. That's the argument. When people argue about Brady or Montana, they're just talking about championships. They're not talking about anything else. So he might get another shot at the Ravens. And if he doesn't, something else has gone bad. And it'll be the biggest game Kyle Shanahan's ever coached. Again, it'll be bigger than any of the other ones he's ever coached. And it'll be the biggest game that he's ever played. And if they win it, they'll be legends for life. And if they lose it, then they'll start 2024 with all the pressure on their shoulders. It's like it really becomes that simple, right? Yeah. Why I I won a Super Bowl and it was just all gravy after that. Harbaugh's going to win a champ. One of these guys is going to win a championship next week, John. It's going to change their life. Now, for Harbaugh, he's already kind of there. But, you know, Saban was the only one that he could win that championship if he had won this week. And people would be like, how many does he have? Like, it wouldn't change a thing. How how many does he have? Six or seven? I say seven. I didn't even look. I don't even know. I. I haven't looked. It's, I, I don't need nobody counts. <laughs> well, he had nothing on the line yesterday, right? Really, it's just, just more I icing. Mean, yeah, just more let. Yeah, more <laughs> icing, right? But he's already got the money. He's already got all the championships. It was just like adding to it. The other three guys had a lot on the line, right? They they could just change their careers, like you said. Harbaugh's the most accomplished of those three, but he still's missing the piece of hardware. Like to me, there are two teams, like Andy Reid this year. For their standards, disastrous season. They're going to win 11 games. They easily won the fucking division. 
I would say more than likely they're going to win a playoff game, even if they get bounced in the second round. If that's your floor, that's like the shitty of the shitty. Clark Hunt, do you think Clark Hunt tells like his lawyer financial advisor, like, God, this doesn't get much better. This is our shitty. Yeah. Because this year, like, they're the only team that anything, when they don't win a championship, it's a, kind of a disappointment now because they've won several. But when it's a disappointment in the sense that it doesn't, no one gets fired or nothing really happens. We just got to change some personnel. John Harbaugh, it's really like John's already won one. But like Lamar, there is a lot of pressure on him, and the Ravens are really good. Odell Beckham, who won with the Rams, said this is the best team he's ever been on. He's probably right. It's the most complete team. To me, them and the Niners, like you don't win a Super Bowl. Like the Eagles are no longer Super Bowl or bust. Like they're just hoping to win a fucking playoff game at this point. The Cowboys, if they made it to this, the championship round, would be the first time in 25 years. The Lions haven't won a playoff game in 30 fucking years. The Rams and the Packers, there's a small minority of people that thought they were going to be competitive, let alone playoff teams. Niners and the Ravens. You could argue the Bills, if they win this game and they're the two seed, there's a lot of pressure, right? Just because you have this, one of the great players in the history of your franchise. Like, that, that's fair. But in the NFC, it's not even close. There's one team that's Super Bowl or bust. A- anything less than getting there and winning that game is going to feel like a major disappointment, especially because if they do get a shot at the Ravens, it's like, well, it's kind of how football works. You kind of throw that first game out. You know what you need to do. Take it like this is – we're having even higher expectations because you know what to look for. You know what not to do. You know, in a weird way, Kyle was like getting pass happy in that game. Well, that's the weird thing about the Niners. They they dance on the graves of the week because they're so good. Like Washington, they were just like, whatever, we're going to fucking clown you. Even the Eagles and the Ni- and the and the Cowboys, like those guys. But like the Ravens were like, okay, you guys want to get into a fucking street fight? We'll shove yeah. you around. Okay, oh, Brock, you want to throw these little passes? We're going to jump. You know why? You're six feet. We're going to get in your way. And I, Kyle was like, Kyle had a bad game. I mean, he just he did. But I also Who think like. Passes? Like, no, he had a bad game. He got work. That happens. Yeah, I mean, I also thought like what could have happened was what happened to Miami. 50, 37 point loss. And I actually gave the Niners. I thought the Niners deserved some credit. Their defense deserved some credit for in a crazy way. They had no business being in that game, giving them a shot to be back in that game. I and mean, they could have scored a touchdown down. Two minutes left. Wait, it was kind of, they're, they're way better than Miami, and they're not like. No, I know that's that's the point. It's like I th- that that is the difference between them and the next tier of team is they actually found a way to give themselves a shot to win that game, and a, not a shot to win, but a shot to get back in that game, right? Because their defense held Baltimore to field goals and forced punts. Like Kyle was going to kick off with three timeouts down by a score. I don't know how in the world they put themselves in that position. They didn't deserve it. The same way I didn't think Texas deserved it, but they were there. Partly because Washington mismanaged it, and Baltimore stopped picking up first downs and scoring points. Once you get that big of a lead, it's it's, it's kind of a weird spot, you know. Yeah, I I just like I don't know I, I didn't tell you this, but uh, um, Greg Cosell. Yeah, I was on KNBR with Dickinson last week, and Cosell goes on every week, and I started just asking him about interceptions, and he like kind of got bothered. He's like, "Why why are we parsing all these plays?" And, uh, you know, it ended up being fine. But uh, the, the point was, like, I think most people don't understand. This is not most other teams. This is about a team that was in a Super Bowl and two plays made the difference. They missed a play on offense and the other team hit, made a play on offense. That was it. They missed Emmanuel Sanders. Patrick Mahomes hit Tyreek Hill. Ball game. That's it. That small. Kyle Shanahan, his whole thing comes down to whether or not he can win a championship with this team. They've spent years trying to get everything right around themselves. They went all in on a quarterback. It failed. They lucked into pick 262. They got him. They've got Debo. They got Ayuk. They got Jennings. They got Trent Williams. They got Kittle. They got Fred Warren. They got, they got Mooney Wards. Maybe. <laughs> right? They got Armstead. Maybe. But, like, they got McCaffrey. But you just it, – Maybe. It's, th- there is nothing when the margin is this thin and you're trying to win a Super Bowl that's not relevant. There's nothing that's not worth parsing. And you're trying to do it with a quarterback that you, John Middlecoff, believes in. I, Guy Haberman, believes in. But, like, it's still very unproven. And I said it all year long, early in the year. When they were 5-0, and people were like, I don't want to hear any more conversation about Brock. What the hell are you talking about? The guy played, like, 17 games. Careers are made over careers, not over a season. So he's still got to go prove it. You got to go win a championship. And then you get all the credit in the world. And then people's, and then you win MVPs and whatever. So I'm with you. Like, I. Wow. I don't think there's any detail too small. I, I, 
were some of those interceptions quote unquote unlucky? Sure, but he hasn't thrown four picks against uh, the Seahawks. He did it against the Ravens, who they're probably going to play again. <laughs> That's the team you got to beat, and they're yeah. good. And their safety is going to be healthy. Is yours? I don't know. Eric Armstead's hurt. Is he going to be back? I don't know. Like that team is freaking good. Yeah, fuck yeah. Well, they're just because they're the only team in the league that can just look at you and go, you're not going to shove us around because right. we, we want to play like that. Like, let's fucking hop in the octagon, throw off the gloves, we'll bare knuckle well, fight you. Yeah. And the Niners are used to because the NFC is a bunch of fucking frauds shoving people around because the Niners are legitimately tough, but so are the Ravens. You know who else is? The Browns. That's why they got in the ring with the Browns. I'm like, hey, we're, we'll hit you just as hard, guys. We're not like, we're not trying to just have like, let you guys score a million points and be like, oh, we tried. Like, no, we want to fucking throw blows. And th- it's the reason why the Browns, I think a lot of people are going to pick the Browns to like win some playoff games. And it's why the Niners are the heavy favorite in the NFC. But like, I- I'm with you. I believe in the quarterback. I think he's really good. Would I, do I feel confident? Like I, I, the Niners can win the Super Bowl. They easily could. They have the talent. Do I feel confident saying they will? No, because he's a, like, I, 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 don't, I don't question Debo. I don't question Brandon Ayuk. I don't question Trent Williams, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa. Like, but him, like, I, Juice. you can tell me he throws – yeah, Juice. I, all, Chris McCaffrey, like all those – Brock could easily throw several touchdowns in a, in a Super Bowl and they win it. He, it also could get weird if it gets the Ravens. Fast. Because we've seen a couple moments where it gets weird and you're not used to it because they beat the shit out of everybody. It's why yesterday people were kind of – you could tell like, oh, uh, See, Michigan plays nobody. And they can only play the schedule beside the games that they're allowed to, you know, schedule on their own. But, like, their conference was down. It's not their problem. Like, they're, they're playing Penn State, Ohio State. They just had down years. The Niners, like, they play the Eagles and the Cowboys. It just turns out they're just not as good. And the Niners beat the shit out of them. And then every time that they get into a game, like, ah, oh, this game's kind of weird. You know, it's a little weird. They're not used to playing in that because they get in weird games, but like, yeah, this team's got no chance. That was the first time. I was like, oh, this thing's a little weird early. But it's like, God, this fucking team's not going away. And they got Lamar, who is in like the peak of his powers. Now, the difference is, you know, the Emmanuel Sanders thing, like their last time in the Super Bowl, they've won the division three out of the last five years, right? They've been in all these playoff games and had success. Like there is no Emmanuel Sanders on this team. It's only elite dudes. Right, so like this. Well, gets Emmanuel to the, wasn't. I mean, it wasn't Emmanuel's fault that that play didn't get made. Though. No, I, I, I know, but like they don't like they're depending on the best of the best. So it is on the quarterback, right? To just like it's he either gets them the ball or not. Right. Like there is no like ah, oh, you know this. You you watch the tape on uh, Valdez Scantling and he just doesn't get open. You know, it's like, none of that bullshit here. So it's which is good. Like there's a ton of pressure. It's I would say anything less. Anything less than a Super Bowl bid is a complete disaster. Super Bowl appearance. A Super Bowl appearance. Like, you making it to Vegas is a fucking disaster. And then there's just, once you get there, it's like, now this is your second time there in five years. Look at the history books. You either get over the hump or, you know, sometimes it just kind of, like, there is, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're going to play that team. I think they can beat that team. Like, I don't think the Ravens are, like, the greatest fucking thing since sliced bread. But, I, you know, it's, are the Niners favored in that game after what we just witnessed? Does that game? No. Pick, how could they be? I think I think it would be like Ravens one and a half two. What do you think it would be? Yeah, I, I could see that a lot of people hammering the Niners and be like a pick them when it kicks off. Okay. But I think the narrative is this: it's just as simple. Because if Lamar wins a couple of playoff games, like oh, he's finally figured out the playoffs; he's a good right. player. People just believe in him. It's like, is Brock? Can Brock Purdy do this? Like that's the whole fuck and the coach. Can Brock Purdy and the coach do this? I think it's like 60 on Shanahan, 60 40 Shanahan Brock. I think Shanahan wears a lot of it. Well, he never comes back when they're down. Never. Now, luckily, they win all these games because they're always up. And then Literally they're just never. Around. They just get to, they, they are a little. It, well, it's, a little it's John, like you know what it Kevin is? Durant Warriors without like the previous championships, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the word for it is front runner, but front runner has such a negative connotation. That's not. They're not front runner in that sense. They just literally play way better from the front because of their style of play. It just works for them. So anyway, all right. Uh, on that note, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just is disaster an understatement if they no. don't win the NFC? Nope, disaster. <laughs> They're so much better than everybody else. They've beaten the Eagles. They've beaten the Cowboys. They can't lose the golf. 
So what do you the Rams beat you again? Who you've you you own them, but only in the regular season? Well, we'll see what happens this week. Just go through the list. Like you're gonna lose to McCarthy at home? You're gonna lose to the Eagles at home? You're gonna lose to Goff at home? Just name the game in the NFC championship game that they lose that doesn't feel like a disaster.